Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. Today, we're going to have a great vlog. We're back to our youth in agriculture, and we're going to talk to Mr. Chad Wade Anderson, a young K student who traveled to Israel and now back home as farm manager. Let's walk with Chad Wade as he tells us his experience both in Israel and how is it to be a student, farm manager, and the support system required to achieve these goals. Welcome back home, man. Yeah, man. Tell us about Israel. What was Israel like? How this happened? What was this whole Israel trip about? Well, the Israel trip, you know, all, happened, all that happened was I got a call from a uh, school PO, which is Miss Monique Woods. She called me and said, Chad, you know, we are looking for some students to go and represent in Israel. She called me on the same day, the same day of the interview. She called me and she met me. She said, all right, no problem. I know some flexible already, so. Then we just iron and just grab a shirt, grab a pants, run go a meeting. The meeting, the meeting did good. Everything about the meeting did nice because at the end of the day, the Israel ambassador, Mr. Sitaman, looked at me and he said, I think you're going to do very well in Israel. And for me, that was very promising to know that it's just an interview and the interviewer look at you and tell you that he think you're going to do well. Then. That was very promising for me. Well, but the journey in Israel, as you know, like, Everything was going to be new because the language, they speak Ivri, yes. Jamaican speak English, right? They speak Patois, that are just few things. However, adapting to it was like one of the easiest things for me. I don't know, but I think for me, I don't know for the others, but I think for me it was very easy. Why it was very easy for me? I like language. And that was the main thing. The main thing was the language. The language barrier was our main problem. However, I get over it in no time. No time. Because no, I, no, Bokato. <laughs> <laughs> even now, I speak it. I, speak, I can speak the Ivory. You see it. And I even speak it. I speak it like the most fluent out of all of us that went to Israel. That's amazing. Yeah, man. How long you spent in Israel? Yeah, man. I spent 11 months there where I did advanced agriculture. So now I have a diploma in advanced agriculture. Yeah. That's, that's pretty nice. So, yeah. what, what, what was the experience? What was like, what, what systems you got? Introduced to when you're in Israel. Why well, systems? No, I could go there, so. <laughs> Come tell me, man. I know it's their fifth years ahead of us. Is, 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 Israel, is a, Israel is a system world, man. Believe me. Like everything from 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 go Israel. All right. The main thing with Israel from the step out of the airport and start the agriculture. Right at the airport. From the step out of the airport and start the agriculture. Right back. When you're reaching the Negev. You know, so then everything get wild with agriculture. Every machine possible where you think of Israel have for agriculture. You get to use a TMR machine? Huh? No, I've never I've never driven the TMR machine. But the TMR machine there it it, it, it is so it is so complex that they don't allow people like us to drive it because the TMR machine there uses a database. So all the all the all the manager do is he creates the ration and after he creates his ration he type that in the in the database and they have like 12 feed station like 12 feed bin so you'll have like your sorghum you'll have your hay you will have your grass then you'll have your grains so you'll just have everything like that right you will have your silage so when you have everything then the TMR machine it will go to it will go to each of the station and it will just pick up, it will just pick up what it needs. If it goes to the grain station, for instance, it goes to the grain station and it needs 10 kg of grains, it goes, it, it will pick up 10 kg of grains, then it moves. It won't pick up anything more than the 10 kg because it's already in the database. Yeah, no, the, the precision TMR, yeah, yeah man, really yeah. outstanding. Um, thing, yeah. So is, was it both livestock or crops was well, the experience? Well, ma, the, the experience was mainly a crop experience, however, however, the, I, live in, I lived in a kibbutz, and you would know what a kibbutz yes, is yes, like. Yes, so, yes. from my kibbutz, we had a dairy section there as well. So, I'm on my dairy unit like anytime I want to because the manager gave me the go ahead. Anytime you want to, come and see. Uh, my question to you if you're supposed to challenge the country, what would you tell them to adopt from your experience in Israel? To adapt from my experience? First, first thing I would tell them to, to adapt from my experience put agriculture on the front burner. Make it number one. Like, yes, tourism will do a lot for us. Believe me, tourism is doing a lot. However, agriculture is the way forward. So we just have to leave it at that because agriculture is the way forward. I mean, the advice for other students who might want to aspire and go to Israel like you? Well, 
the truth is you just have to you just have to go out there believe me because in in my position like being at being at case like i'm i'm always an uh, outspoken person i'm always the person who to go for it i'm the go-getter i'm always on the mission i'm mission driven that's just me right so things like this you will have you will have like other you'll have people that looks up to you so like the first the the first they get a new a new what would i say now like the first opportunity come up for, for a new venture they're going to call on you because they know that well you know the child i want to go get at them mm -hmm. and they're outstanding and they're going to go and they're going to represent we good well, right so yeah that's just it because, be a go-getter yeah i like that be a go-getter so I know it must be rough for you as a student and also as a farm manager. You really are a go-getter. Tell me this experience so far, what it is like, um, any challenges, any advice for persons trying to be similar to what, you know, being similar to what you're doing. Well, just believe me. It, it is going to be difficult. But at the end of the day, you have to know that it is the difficulty will only be temporary. Right? So what we have to do, we have to get it difficult with your type part. That's it. So. As long as we get rid of the hard part, then the soft part come along. Soft part come yeah, along. Yeah, because like being here, I've been here like two weeks and four days now, right? And the amount of things I put in place within that two weeks, four days, I feel accomplished. Nice, nice, See? nice. And you get, to, you get to apply stuff what you learn from yeah, Israel here also. Yeah, I get, to, I get, to, and the, it, it is easier when I can apply. I support the dream here. Right? I support the dream here because not everybody in Jamaica is going to feel like okay I'm going to invest into a commercial goat farm. It is St. Mary, it is cool, very cool here. Everybody you have afraid of St. Mary and you have a commercial goat farm right here in St. Mary. Yeah. See? So things like these I I like these and if I support your vision I'm going to try as best as possible to make your vision mine. Lovely. And since he called on me as a farm manager, I'm going to make his vision mine. So how did Case prepare you for this new experience, going to Israel now working as a farm manager? Well, you know, Case, Case, Case has been the backbone to all of this. In, in reality, Case has been the backbone and we cannot, we cannot fight it out and we cannot go any less. We have to just give Case its props, right? Because Case have ensured, like, when, when I went to Israel, like farm work, nothing because Kies has already built us for all of that you see it so Kies was the stepping stone that you need to go in israel when i go into israel when it comes down to theoretical knowledge it is it is not that hard as Kies. and the reason why it's not that hard because your exams are easier the truth, <laughs> that's what's the truth because leaving Kies when i reach israel then you realize that boy so exam me there i do and when I realize that if, if you can overcome all of that, then why wouldn't you overcome Israel? Israel, yes, yes, yes. So, alright, for instance, there is one lecturer at Kies that uh, we can point out. We can point out Jason O'Bailey, that man teach me marketing. Mm -hmm. When we have a marketing class in Israel, the marketing class in Israel, marketing class are going and you don't believe only Jamaican like class. Yeah, because. Mr. Bailey is a hectic man for deal with still, you know. Believe me, in course load is heavy, but at the end of the day, his teaching method is on point. Great. You see, because what he gives you a lot of work for do. At the end of the day, that lot of work what you get for do, from you do the work, you don't have to study afterwards because you have to, you have to retain because it is so repetitive. The, the work is so repetitive that you have, you have, to, you have to do something you have to retain. Retain it. Great. You have Hanover thing on your hat. Um, you born in Hanover? Yeah, man. I'm originally from Hanover. That's my born part. Oh, so, nice. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about you know, yourself, how you move from probably high school to case. Give me a little like that. Yeah, man. So, high school, well, high school more led me for case, you know. Because you see high school, my, my agriculture teacher in high school is a case graduate. Oh. So he ensures that he prepares us for what it will be like. Well for my man. Case, right? So being at case now then the definite high school. My father died in when I was in ninth grade. Oh so condolence. Yeah man. So after after eleventh grade I was thinking like but what what do I do now? What what do I do from now on? Right? I'm about to leave high school and no I can't stay at home then I was like 
So I wonder who would hire somebody with 9CXC subject and like if a person not hire you with 9 cc like, what would your pay be like? And then they think like why? No, no, my vision just bigger. We feel like boy, I go further, so I, I figure kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was very active at high school. So my my 4-H coordinator who was Dr. Winter at that time. Dr. Winter said to me, Chadway, there's a scholarship. There's a scholarship from Hanover Charities for 4-H for 4-H students. I was like, yeah. I was like, no problem. So the moment I hear that, I signed up. Hanover Charities gave me my first, the first quarter of my tuition going into kids. Wow. So when I get the first quarter of my tuition, then I went into kids and I was like, all right, so I need to apply myself, I need to apply myself. I know I need to apply myself, but I still had student loan on the back burner saying, well, if all of that don't work out, what may I try? Well, something else have to work. So mm -hmm. I got so hard now. And I jumped to Hanover Charities. I jumped to Hanover Charities. Hanover Charities gave me my first, gave me the first quarter. Then after that, I have, I have student loan dealing with as well as I was signing up for Jamaica Development Dairy Board. Okay, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I, got the ja I got Jamaica Development Dairy Board. They gave me 180. What? So That's I nice. Uh, I applied for Sephrad. I got Sephrad. Sephrad covered me for one full year. What? So Six, yeah, man. Three. Yeah, man. And then, and then I have my Hanover Charities again. So, so far I've been I've been you're blessed. No man, you've been blessed. I've been on scholarships going forward. That's amazing. My, uh, my scholarship cheer though. Me and her, we have the closest relationship. When I call her and I tell her I'm here, she's like, Oh my god, Chadwick, I'm so proud, Chadwick. I'm going to put you in a Zoom call. And I was like, Okay, no problem. Yeah, that's because that's just us. Like she I don't know, but the relationship that she have with her with the scholarship awardees, I don't know, it's next to none. Because she I give you free money and at the end of the year when I get the free money, she make you seem like why you're just the best person in the world. So you see all of that good energy and that good vibe, you only push up and go further. Go no further. I like that. You all go further, you just want to do it more, you see it? That's really so, inspirational. Yeah man, so I represent I've volunteered with Hanover Charities, always I volunteer with Hanover Hope Foundation, always. Those are my scholar those are my main scholarship foundations. Great. Great yeah, story, man. Mr. Anderson. Inspiration for the youth. I do believe that was an excellent experience for us to all witness how is it that a young guy can actually experience so much and achieve his goals, especially in the realms of agriculture. I hope this inspired the youths. So, so on this side, we have our fattening box. The fattening box. We have pregnant mummies. These are the sides. And we have four sides right here. And we have some potential mothers. These mothers, we, are, we have them on a flushing program. Yes. We are going to put them back into breeding by mid-February. Lovely. These are more pregnant mothers as well. So, so far, the unit, the unit is going on well. And it's all time, the unit is going to be further than even expected to be. One hour every day, just for tea. That's great, that's because great. I definitely feel that what I know, they need to know. Transfer information. Yeah. Love I that, bro. Transfer the information. 